Twój przewodnik po świecie języka angielskiego. Dzień dobry, tu Monika Podbielska. Witam Cię w podcaście, w którym opowiadam Ci historię o języku angielskim, ale też opowiadam historię w języku angielskim. Dzisiaj będzie historia w języku angielskim, w której opowiem Ci skąd się wzięły obchody dnia 1 maja. Wielu z nas kojarzy się ten dzień z demonstracjami, pochodami komunistycznymi. Natomiast tak naprawdę jego historia jest bardzo bogata, złożona i dowiesz się tak naprawdę z jakiego kraju wywodzi się to święto. Słuchaj opowieści właśnie w prostym języku angielskim, żeby uczyć się słów, przyswajać sobie nowe informacje tylko właśnie słuchając tekstów. Spróbuj zrozumieć całość. Możesz najpierw zapoznać się z tekstem, który można pobrać z mojej strony www.monikapodbielska.com a następnie tak przygotowanym i tak nauczonym już słownictwa, które będzie używane, w pełni cieszyć się zrozumienia tekstu. W ten sposób właśnie podczas takich prostych słuchanek możecie przygotować się do korzystania w taki już pewny siebie sposób z tekstów autentycznych, gdzie mówi się szybko, gdzie mówi się naturalnie i gdzie tego słownictwa jest rzeczywiście dużo. Zapraszam. Mayday. Mayday Traditions is an old holiday, as old as the ancient Roman times, and even older. There was the Roman festival of Flora, the goddess of spring, which lasted from April the 28th to May the 3rd. It was the festival of rebirth and fertility. During this festival, colorful flowers were offered to this goddess. After the Romans conquered Europe, They brought this custom to all occupied countries. By the Middle Ages, this Roman custom had become very popular, especially in England. The English people celebrated the Flora Festival on May the 1st. It was believed that on May the 1st, a new life was beginning, both for the nature and for people. On the May Day, people were getting up very early, and especially girls were washing their faces with dew, which was supposed to keep them beautiful in the next year. Others were decorating their houses with tree branches and spring flowers. During the day, people were going to town squares to take part in maypoles. The maypole was a tree without branches, sometimes with a small cluster of greenery remaining at its head. It was then decorated with paintings and drawings, as well as with flowers and rolls. In the 1900s, ribbons were added as a decorative means. After various competitions with bows and arrows, the main male pool ceremony with dancing and party began. In dancing movements, the male pool was wrapped in ribbons and decorated further. In many villages in England and the USA, people still dance around the maple on May the 1st. The maple is considered to be an emblem of spring. May Day is more important in northern Europe than in warmer countries farther south, as people there get tired of cold winter weather and short days and happily welcome spring. People of Belgium used to welcome spring with parades and fairs. The people of the Netherlands celebrated with tulips festivals. In France, people were giving fresh flowers to others for good luck. In Ireland, people believed that in May, fairies would appear and cast mists over travelers. In order to avoid trouble, The Irish preferred to stay close to home at that time. But if they had to travel, they would wear their coats inside out, trying by all means to confuse the fairies. In addition, parents had to keep a close eye on their young ones, in case the fairies would like to take the children away, leaving in exchange other children, who were called changelings, instead. In some parts of Ireland, people still leave food and drink for the fairies in those places of the household where the fairies are likely to appear. 
For many people, May Day is a holiday associated with the communist countries like Cuba or China. In fact, May Day has its origins in America. In the late 19th century, the working class was fighting for the eight-hour working day. Work conditions were extremely hard and severe. The working day lasting 10 to 12 hours was common and in case of death or injury, families had no help. Children were also working as they provided cheap labor to employers and laws against child labor were not strongly enforced. In 1860s, workers agitated for a shorter workday. On Tuesday the 5th, September 1882, 10,000 workers marched in New York City. During this parade, a resolution was passed to hold all the future parades on the same day and called this day a Labor Day. The participants took an unpaid day off to honor the workers of America, as well as protested against the working conditions. As years passed, more states began to hold these parades and Congress legalized them 12 years later. On the 11th of May, 1894, workers of the Pullman Place Car Company in Chicago protested against wage cuts and firing union representatives. In the response, the American Railroad Union boycotted Pullman railway cars. In the next year's days, 50,000 of rail workers joined the protest and rail traffic from Chicago was suspended. On the 4th of July, President Grover Cleveland sent troops to Chicago and suppressed the strike bloodily. This event drew attention of the public opinion to the working conditions problem. Ultimately, Congress declared Labor Day or May Day as the national holiday for workers. The Socialist Party, though, held similar celebrations of the working class on May the 1st, eventually known as the May Day, and it was celebrated by the socialists and communists out of the US to commemorate the working class. Even fascist parties, which needed the support of workers, agreed to hold the May Day. The Third Reich declared the 1st of May a National Workers' Day in 1933. In the UK, the 1st of May was made a bank holiday by the Labour government in 1978. May Day protests played a significant role in many upheavals like the uprising against apartheid in 1980s. May Day is an official holiday in 66 countries and unofficially celebrated in many more. When we remember that people were killed so that we could have the 8-hour working day, homes with the whole families were burnt to ground so that we could have Saturdays as part of the weekend, when we remember that as young as 8-year-old victims of industrial accidents were marching in the streets in protest against working conditions and child work only to be beaten by police, we should understand that our current condition has much to owe to. People were fighting for the rights and dignities that we enjoy today. The sacrifices of such a big number of people cannot be forgotten, and that is why we celebrate the May Day. Now, the May Day, the Labor Day, is often regarded as a day of rest, but in some countries the 1st of May Labor Day are full of parades, speeches, and political demonstrations. In America, an old custom prohibits to wear the white color after Labor Day. The custom was enrooted in popular fashion etiquette. This etiquette originally stated that white shoes were taboo. This custom is not popular now, and fashion magazines call the people who dare to wear white as creative and bold. So, have a good rest from work on the May Day, and to be heard next time. Bye-bye, Monika Podbielska.